Welcome, welcome to Arizona Real Estate News with Pat. What's my rate? McMasters and Ruby and Jackie from Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Jackie, welcome back. Hey, dog. Jackie's I, feeling better. I thought I was dying. Yeah, you were, God. you were knocking on death's door there for a while. We were, uh, uh, we, you know, you get on the phone with you and the conversation was. <laughs> 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 so but um i do have um according to the cdc guidelines um i have a mask on my sound bar <laughs> that only happens to pat yeah <laughs> yeah really so, so you know because you know how accurate they've been so i'm i'm following that uh quite well so today's uh, yes. oh go ahead oh go ahead i was just gonna say yesterday i um <laughs> listening to i think it's 92.3 and they said that they are requesting uh recommending that everybody wear masks right now because there's a surge in covid so yeah i don't my know not, news this morning i'm not i'm not game for the mask mine's the in the n95s work <laughs> only yeah. the n95s all right yeah. anyway we'll get in trouble on youtube if we have any controversial subjects on that so okay I, all right i try to stay away from it but Speaking of subjects, this one is interesting to me, and this is that um, single-family building permit counts have collapsed with only 1,149 being issued in October for Maricopa and Pinal County, lowest monthly total since February 2015 and down 53% from October 2021. They make a comment here that I kind of wanted to discuss that said, the situation is completely different with multifamily permits. Those are way up, right? And saying, um, let's see, where can I find this? Um, there was a comment there that said, um, da, 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 da. basically, they made the insinuation that said, well, what if interest rates go down and business picks up, is this going to put us into another shortage? because they don't have an issue a lot of permits so i guess it depends on how much active inventory they've already got out there right now and i don't have access to that but i i think they're being cautious and i think and i was discussing this with pat earlier and i think this is one of the reasons this is the consumer sentiment see how that is way down here consumers are just feeling kind of negative right now at the rate that they yeah. were back here in 1980 so if you're a builder, you're going to go, uh, I think we're just going to hold off for a little bit. I could be all wet. I've been looking at a lot of new builds and specs, and there is a ton mm -hmm. of specs out there that are ready. In fact, I've got two clients. One's coming in from California tomorrow, and then another one who actually is in a lease till June. But she's decided if we can get her a great deal on a spec, um, there's a lot of incentives to get them off the books before the end of December. Oh, yeah, they're throwing yeah. everything at you but the kitchen sink. Right. Yeah. I have two that are looking as well, and there are some great incentives right now. Well, I'm seeing active listings are following the seasonal trend. Uh, what is interesting on my seven-day moving average is I predicted last week that we'd get down to like 1,900 um, contracts, and we plunged down to 1,700. So I was <laughs> off by a couple. This will spring back, but mm -hmm. that's kind of where we are right now. And uh, but this here's some good news here, um, and that is that investor purchases for Q3 in Phoenix are down almost fifty percent. That's that's a good thing. So we want to see more of that continue. And I just wanted to add too that we are sponsored by Red Hog Media, and they. Talking to them a couple weeks ago at our little Swarry and Chandler, they said that the trend is now for floor plans to be included in listings versus the 360 tour, which I really like. But they're saying mm -hmm. people are kind of shying away from those. They just want to see the floor plan. So they include that. They take that same camera and it draws up a floor plan for the house and you can include it in your listing. So that's uh, uh, Red Hog Media. And if you go into the... Uh, Discount code and put in Rick helps. You'll get 10% off. One more last thing. Uh, a lot of information. Saw a lot of YouTube saying that, you know, Black Friday sales were down and 
in reality, they were up 2.3% versus last year. So there's a lot of news that's out there that's got a lot of headlines and it's just uh, it's real estate prediction season and eco economic prediction season and the headline will say real estate's going to plunge and then you read and they're saying well it could go down 20 percent but then again it could go up four so who knows so, don't tell the fed about black friday please yeah yeah well <laughs> Let's get to the really important thing, and that is, Pat, um, what are the odds of me paying you a dollar um, in the first quarter of 2023? Because well, I said the rates won't be down to five. So, well, In the fives. In the fives. Yeah. In the fives. Yeah, let's, let's go. So 5.99, I owe you a buck. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call you that day. Yeah, I mean. Um, Can we do side be... bets on this? Side bets, that? yeah. Yeah, so. I'm with Pat. <laughs> oh god now i'm up to two bucks yeah uh november i mean you see here i mean today we're having a pretty good day i mean obviously the uh personal consumption expenditures came out came in at like they're only up 0.3 they're in line so you know we had the 10-year treasury at 3.58 and we saw here obviously things kind of we saw some softening before the meeting and obviously november 10th was a big day that um you know it was obviously about three weeks ago so we're seeing rates stabilized here now so we're finding another floor they're finding a floor three six seven three six eight um these little lines right here are different floors of support you see right here this little line right here there's it's up against 3.54 you know this is these are rates actually so i'm flipped it around instead of the um price to show people but yeah these lines we've got some support at 3.43 and then we've got you know, rates, they fall. They're, they're very saying that there could be 150 basis points of movement in the in the price of the bond. So, I mean, that would be like the 101.3 going to about almost 1.3, which would be a, that would be a healthy move again. So, um, so when but, you know, yesterday, to... yesterday we saw a huge move. Um, it was up, the bonds were up 80 basis points when um, Powell was getting a little less hawkish on rates. You know, saying that they're probably going to do 50 basis points, you know, kind of letting it out there in the market. But things seem as though, obviously, we got the BLS report uh, with the jobs, too, coming out tomorrow. But um, there's going to be some risk there. It seems as though bonds are right now short term because we've been basing out here. It seems like they've been a little bit overbought, you know, um, meaning they've been good giving good support to rates. But, you know, there might be a sell off. But things have stabilized nicely here. And I think there's two markets that we're seeing. I mean, what the market's seeing and what people are feeling is two different things. You know, I mean, they're saying inflation's down. But, you know, I talked to Average Joe and Mary Smith. You know, they're not going to say inflation is down. I mean, we're starting to see it in the numbers. And that's why I think you see that that lag. There's always that lag effect. Because we're, we're looking at the market and they're looking, like I said, the Average Joe and Mary Smith are looking at Okay, what's my pocketbook stay? And they're still saying it's hurting. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question about inflation, if I can. And, and since I'm so far you. off on mortgage rates, uh, I'm going to stay in my lane. But uh, <laughs> the I, I had a comment yesterday. It was actually kind of a it wasn't a very nice comment. It said that I'm always wrong, um, and uh, um, it never made it to the public comments because it was held for review. But but basically said, you know, that housing is the main driver of inflation. So I looked up both metrics, CPI, and what's the other one? CME is what? The, the PCE. The PCE, okay. And housing and uh, rental costs make up between 16 and 18% of both of those metrics. Does that sound about right? Well, I've heard the number 30. So That's what I've heard, close to a third. Yeah, it's a third. I mean, who, you know. You know, yeah, these, it's like these everything numbers, else you, I mean, not, you know the numbers for you know like like you said the jobs report you know a lot, a lot, i don't know if a lot of people know this or not but like you said, i talked talked about this before these are just serve household you know there's a big variance between these uh there's two job reports a bls and then um the other jobs report but these are basically household surveys where they get on the phone and talk to people see who's you know how they're filling the jobs so this is not actual um 
you know, numbers per se. Like this, these are numbers are. That's why they're always changing the estimates. So it's kind of like the small town I used to live in, and a newspaper would call you and go, "Hi, did you have any out of town company this week?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, rents were down one percent. Um, we've seen uh, last month and it's, it's the third month in decline. So things are, have been softening a little bit on the rental side, which is good. Oh, I'm so. seeing a big change on the rental side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. There was about 10,000 listings. If you took, um, what's an MLS and then what's on apartments, because I was looking at this, we have a client that we just listed her, uh, fourplex. In fact, we listed it yesterday. Um, and we're right. We're going to probably have it sold today. Um, but we don't have it active on the MLS even. We don't even so. know. It was from investors calling. And Ruby spoke to one of the investors and we, we've mm -hmm. got it negotiated. So, but I was doing a lot of digging into the rentals uh, when we were getting ready to list this because I wanted to see where the rental market was going and be able to guide our client and um, tell her what her expectations because she didn't know she wanted to hold on to it and rehab it and then um, keep it as a rental um, or sell it. And so when I started doing a lot of digging, there is a lot of rentals out there, more than I think I've ever seen in numerous years. And I'm seeing a lot of price adjustments on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also hearing from people that are saying that their landlord's trying to raise their rent and they're pushing back and the mm -hmm. landlords are, are giving in. So we're we're down to 132 a square foot on average at the MLS, down from a peak of a dollar forty. So it's not huge, but it is it is there. That's great. I mean, that's the start this, of a trend. Yeah. 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 It looks like show, a pretty aggressive trend too. So. Mm -hmm. Does Cromford show any more data on rentals? They don't show much. Um, actually, oh. the MLS uh, um, comes out with a report once a month that's more in depth than anything I've seen in the Cromford report, but they. I don't but dig that's a lot of MLS in. listings. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's only MLS. Because last time I looked, I think there were um, eight thousand listings that that I could find on Rent.com that probably aren't wow. on the MLS because that includes all the apartments. Where the MLS doesn't include those major apartment complexes, right? You know? And that's where the glut's coming. So you don't have to drive too many neighborhoods to see that there's an overabundance of uh, apartments being built. But and the other the question, rents. the other question that I got this week, and that was out on the market, are you sensing or feeling that sellers are starting to get a little more concerned and maybe edging closer to panicking about selling their home? Not panicking. We're both shaking our head. Yeah. No, not panicking. No. So you, what do you, you have? Two thousand eight was panicking. Concerns out there. Um, I mean, your sellers. I mean, you know, if their home's sitting on the market 30, 40 days, are they wigging out? They're they not wigging taking, out. Like, no, they're, we're, we're just we doing had, small price reductions on our listings. Go ahead, Jax. Oh, I was just gonna. No, you go ahead. No, you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get into this every time. Um, you know, we've done some creative financing on a couple of our listings. Um, really, we only had one client that was panicking, and that was, you know, he is not a client of ours anymore. And it was because he overpaid, over rehabbed, and was upside down. Um, but I'm not seeing a lot of panicking. I, there's a few sellers with some concern, but they're just like, oh, we'll take it off and rent and try it later. I'm wondering if if when we look at this market right now, if just there's um, in December, today is 1st of December, um, people are more optimistic about January and February for a lot of different reasons. So they're looking at December and going, it's just the holidays, it's slow. If, if we don't see any positive news and movement in January, you know, that might make sellers go, Ooh, we should become more aggressive. Cause I'm not seeing uh, price reductions much at all anymore right now. Well, I think that's because of agents. They're instructing their clients. It, you know, you plan on build, doing concessions. Everybody that makes an offer comes in under list price. Everybody so I does. think that 
yeah, so the expectation is there. So I, I think they're kind of to the point where they're kind of holding firm. I'm seeing a lot of comments in MLS from listing agents saying that they will do concessions and do buy downs and they're contributing certain amounts. So I am seeing more of that than I was seeing, you know, even just a few weeks ago, but I'm not seeing a bunch of panic. I was speaking to some clients uh, uh, this week. I was out showing homes and I said, the interesting thing is I go, I don't care what your list price is. Nobody's going to offer it. Mm -hmm. So you can have a house that's worth $400,000 and you can, and that 400,000 is probably 20% below what it was six months ago. And you could, Put it on the market for three hundred thousand. They're going to come in and offer you two ninety. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the list price, um, nobody's offering list price from what I see. And everybody's, well, where do you think I can go with this? Which is understandable. You know, people are hearing that prices are coming down, but they don't. They're not paying a whole lot of attention to where they started the price and where they are now. They just look at the list. It's like going to the store. Oh, this bottle of water is a buck and a half. I wonder if I can get it for a buck and a quarter. And right. so so that's just the mentality that's out there. And, and I think uh, that's why they're it's staying like that. We just closed that one with Pat. It was a new build spec. We got 10 grand off the list price, all the closing costs covered for a VA. And what was it, twelve thousand dollars for the buy down? Uh twelve something yeah, like that. 25. It was nineteen thousand dollars between total. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm seeing more and more of that. I saw one that I showed this weekend that just said in the uh, private remarks, it said that the seller is will willing to contribute $10,000 towards closing costs or rate buy down. So mm -hmm. that's the new, the new trend that's out there. So I think they're, it's, it, there's a lot of evidence to showing that they're holding on their list price so they can give you more. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, and then that just makes sense. And that will probably increase in January. Because there's always an optimistic view in January. Historically, and, and we don't have any seasonality now. But historically in January, that's when we see the most listings come on board. And then in February, we see the largest number of price reductions. Because everybody's optimistic in January. <laughs> but normally, we don't have people sitting with 3 and 4% interest rates when the rates are even in the sixes. So... Had a question today on that too that I wanted to pose to you guys. And it was a great question, I thought. And it was a gentleman that was watching Michael Zuber um, in California. And he raised the subject and said, Is it, while there are people that are out there like 3% interest rates, do you think it's possible that many of them bought and overextended themselves even at a 3% rate and that this could be a problem if there's job losses down the road? Uh, absolutely. I think so. There's a lot of people that um, bought and paid way too much and still are paying more than they should be on their mortgages. I even think. though they got, even though they got a good rate. Yeah, because it's still, what did they pay for the house and what's their payment? So it's just a matter of, there's a lot of um, people struggling out there. Well, I mean, my answer was, yeah, there probably is, but I think, and this is the comment to Pat, is that, but I think the majority of the people that are way under 4% probably refied and saved money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. I mean, there there's people that I was dropping from, you know, four and a half, four and three quarters down to two and three quarters, and they were dropping, you know, saving four, five, six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. I mean, so... Yeah, I mean, so, and that's probably the majority of the note holders that have the low rate, not, not the people that bought in 2021. I'm, I'm just, right. right. I don't have right. the numbers. And they're not, yeah. and they're, they're the ones who bought in 18, 18, 19 and 20. Uh, when rates, when their rates were low, you know, they still have equity. So um, I, I, I got mean, a question on, on all this uh, for Pat. So, you know, back when we had, great crash people were using their houses as atms i talked to a lot of clients that did refis and they weren't doing that this time i did no. know a few people that were like yeah i need to pay off some debt i'm going to take advantage of it but i didn't see that flood no. and that was my question to pat you didn't because you do this all day yeah i mean i uh yeah i, I saw very the refis um uh, 
I can't remember a refi that I did. I mean, I know there, there were people who were probably taking some cash out. You know, I'm talking maybe five, ten, fifteen thousand, but not in the massive lumps like fifty, seventy five hundred thousand dollars. People, um, I I saw a different wave of people. They're like, nope, I just want to just re refinance. I don't need any money. I'm tight. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people out there. The millennials, the younger generation. There's a group of them that were very smart. They might have student loans, but a lot of them that I've done did loans for um, had very little debt. They were just smart about the money, and they had you know, they got gifted money. They got maybe fifty thousand or hundred thousand or twenty five thousand from a relative. So um, they did. I saw very little cash out. I mean, we're starting to see HELOCs now. People are taking HELOCs out, you know, because uh, problem is people are taking HELOCs out now because they're in at two and three quarters, and they don't want they don't want to upset that two and three quarters rate. So they're getting maybe twenty five or fifty thousand dollars on a HELOC to do something. But a lot of times that people are taking money out, I'd say I'm just throwing this number out. Nine out of ten were because they wanted to do something to the house and not because they wanted to buy a boat or do a do a vacation. It was always smart money to actually increase the value of the home. So that's a totally where it's different going. atmosphere from the crash. Oh yeah. Totally. I mean it's it's night and day. Night and day. The, yeah, you, know, you watched, you know, before back in 2006 and 7, you just drive around, you see, uh, um, um, you know, the Harley Davidson stores are doing very, very well. Um, backyard uh, improvements, you know, you saw uh, barbecues, you saw hot tubs and uh, and boats were selling like crazy. So <laughs> and everybody was getting it with their uh, their home equity loan. They were tapping into an ATM. So. Yeah, well, this is I, a. Uh, I want to. It's gonna be interesting to watch the. It's going to be the employment numbers tomorrow, right, Pat? Is that what we're yep. expecting? Yeah, job report. So, it's expected again, to be I, down. Uh, I think they're expecting two hundred thousand. So, I mean, you know, the market's been trading pretty quiet here. So, I mean, um, it, usually the market gets jittery the day before, but it's been been fairly quiet so it'd probably be a number that's sp kind of spot on you know i don't know we'll see but based on today's gonna, trading it doesn't look like we're gonna see too much change we'll see i'll see if i'm right tomorrow yeah yeah well well like i say i'm gonna stay in my lane <laughs> <laughs> i you know i really like watching the rates i like i like uh um seeing where they're going i like looking at economic data i'm not trained in that at all but i like the spitball uh, i think from what i've seen there wasn't a whole lot of holiday hiring that went on this year um because all the big boys like you know target and best buy they held back because they weren't expecting a lot of traffic and uh the downside to that is if you go into any of those stores like target or best buy um it's harder to get help now i mean they're shorthanded so the ones that are working there are running their butts off but they were cautious and it goes back to that beginning chart that I showed you consumer sentiment. So there was yeah. a lot of data that said it wasn't going to be a great time for boots on the ground for shopping. So let's not add a whole bunch of staff to our stores. And I think that might bleed into some of the employment numbers tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, I could be wrong. <laughs> well, good. Well, thanks folks. Thanks for joining us. And I will see you next week. Same time. Thursdays at six o'clock. Have a great weekend coming up and a good December. See ya. Take care. Have a good December. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.